you know, to keep us going. And so she gets into this that affirmations, ultimately, when we do them long enough, we don't need them anymore because we are in communion with the Father. So they serve to get us to the party, but once we're at the party, you know, we don't need to practice that practice anymore. Amen. Okay, I did a new picture just for you guys. Robert talked about it last week. It's noisy, isn't it? <clears throat> so we go through life, we're projecting on this screen of life, and we're projecting out of our opinions, our biases, our, you know, a lot of the unconscious mind, which is in the middle, unconscious mind, the front of the, the brain is the conscious mind, and then the back of the mind is Christ mind, okay, the super conscious. And I wrote meditation horizontally there on the back of the head so that as we meditate, we permeate the barriers between Holy Spirit and our unconscious, subconscious mind. And our nature begins to be rewritten. So that's the work on the back of the mind, bringing in Christ mind. But we can do work on the front. And this is denials and affirmations. So our cognitive input, we're inputting things we want and we're denying the things that we don't want. Okay? Okay. So the classic I mean, if you're a student of unity, you've got to know this line. I am a child of God, therefore I do not inherit sickness. Myrtle Fillmore, this was her affirmation for two years, and she was healed from tuberculosis. So why did it take two years? You know, I, I was listening to a, a recording of Healing and Recovery the other day. It's a book by Hawkins. And he's talking about being a psychiatrist. He's seen a lot of people with multiple personalities. And some personalities don't need their prescription. Some have allergies. Some don't. Some personalities smoke, and the others don't. Could you imagine the other personality comes on, and they don't need their glasses anymore? It's pretty heavy, huh? So the mind is convinced of what it is, and we live a life based on what this thing is convinced what we are. Pretty heavy, huh? Pretty cool. Okay, so here's a great example. I, did you guys, did anybody read this book this week? Yes. Okay, so this is one of her examples in the book, and it's phenomenal. That's why it's so huge. I didn't want to abbreviate it. I am spirit, perfect, holy, harmonious. Nothing can hurt me or make me sick or afraid, for spirit is God, and God cannot be sick or hurt or afraid. I manifest my real self through this body now. That's a good one if you've got any kind of an ailment, huh? That's a good one. So you can do the denial like Myrtle did. I'm a child of God, therefore I do not inherit sickness. And then move into this one for physical healing. There's a lot of things we can do with affirmation. Some people use it to build their finances. You know, I, uh, I have divine ideas to create wealth. You know, they just insert what you want to create in your life. Okay, so whatever you ask for in prayer, believe that you have received it and it will be yours. How much more real do we have to, to, to the reality of those multiple personalities? How different their physiology immediately changes? An allergy is instantly gone because of a belief system? It's typically what it is. Old belief systems, I mean, we get sick for a couple of reasons. Somebody sniffles, it's like a yawn. If I yawn, that's the most contagious thing in the world. Well, so is a runny nose. We just assume if their nose is running, mine's going to be running pretty soon. It doesn't have to be. You know, I remember um, I was in the zone in the Philippines. We did a lot of praying for people and, um, and uh, people that were sick. And, you know, that anyhow, but just, I remember be, being in the zone and it's like, oh, I feel a headache coming on. Well, I don't need this. And just gone. I don't need this. Gone. 
It's like, I'm so grateful when I have migraines nowadays. They don't really hurt that much. If I bend over, they hurt, but still. <laughs> throbbing, I got to keep my head up, put my sunglasses on. Still light sensitive. But the pain is very diminished. Okay. That which you hold in mind in the silence tends to manifest, not as a result of causation. This is important, but potentiality manifesting. Modern uh, science, quantum theory, quantum theoretical physics, Heisenberg principle and Schrodinger's equation, both show that the energy of the witness, of the person watching an experiment, influences that experiment in science. So our energy has an effect. And so when we are um, in a downer mood and we're doing an affirmation, how much energy do you think has that, in that affirmation? Not much, not much. And this is really key. Um, one of the things I learned in, when I came into New Thought was affirmative prayer is being in the habit of praying as if it's already done, being in a place of gratitude. So here's where I get into this. If you're in a place of pride, pride is pretty low energy. So we want to be in a place of surrendering to God and ask God for help. Um, and then once we've opened that door of asking God for help, now we express gratitude, believing we've already received it like that scripture. Believe that you've already received it. Being in that place, being in a place of gratitude really raises your consciousness level. It fills the heart. Gratitude at a, as an energy level is right up with love and unconditional love. And it's, could you advance that mic? So when you're a place just of pride or being a downer, you're down in the red zone. Pride is the most powerful of the lower emotions, but it's not enough to realize healing. You want to be up in the blue zone to experience healing or a transformation in your life. So gratitude is way up there in that blue zone, okay? So we practice being grateful as if we've already received it. How's that for a shortcut? Okay, good. move ahead. Okay, so for me, I, you know, a lot of unity people tell you, don't do supplicative prayer. Well, I do it for devotional practices. God, make my heart soft. God, change my thinking. You know, unlock this. This is the prison. If we're ever stuck in prison, this is it. This is the cell you want to open up to get out of jail up here. It's your thinking. So um, these, all these works do not change God's mind. They change our mind. We become changed. We come into alignment with God as we do these practices. We're changing negative thinking into divine positive thinking. We're seeing healing. We're seeing prosperity. We're seeing beautiful things done in people's life. My hope is that, you know, the unity movement is known for being loving and accepting of people. That's a characteristic you should experience in any unity church anywhere in the country. They honor all pathways to God, and they don't care anything about the person personally. They see that ember, that eternal soul that is here forever. And for us all individually, see, that's the corporate culture in unity. But as individuals, I believe we can all get to a place in our personal lives of unconditional love of loving and accepting anybody for anything. And no matter what happens, if they're being schmucky, we can just say, well, you know what, they're just being naive, or they're, you know, they're innocent. They don't see the big picture, and they're just doing their best. So especially as there's, we were talking before service and how some of the different ethnic or minority or religious groups are really afraid of what's happening and I would just say that nothing's happening. You know, there's a lot of funny things that we don't understand. And usually, uh, you know, the confused mind says no. If we don't understand what's going on, we habituate to fear. That's an old program that we can eliminate. We don't need fear. It doesn't serve us. I I've shared this story before, but um, a guy pulled a knife on me once, and I squared off I was going to take him on, you know. and. So I had taken a few years of martial arts, just enough to get myself really messed up. And all of a sudden, the little voice says, this could get really bloody really quick. And so I just 
stood square, and I said, Lord, I give you the situation, and I just stood there. And the guy came with, with a knife, and then all of a sudden he just stopped. I wasn't going to move. And uh, it's like, and he was high. But it was like I didn't have to move into fear. The energy of fear, you know, some, some critters, if they feel you're afraid, they'll go after you even more. Well, there was no fear. I had surrendered it. Well, that was one thing, but I also think that a big old hairy angel touched him. <laughs> I call my guardian angel Gus, so I think Gus just touched him and sobered him up. It's pretty cool. But I don't have to be in fear. So in this book, Healing and Recovery, he takes a lot of these practices into the nonverbal, that little into the silence prayer. He had written that prayer, actually he spoke it. And in this book, uh, that's what I was reading the other day, um, he goes through details like 26 or 27 serious ailments that he healed non-conventionally. And so here's, if, you, if you're into that, using affirmative prayer in this way for physical healing, you might consider that. But listen to your doctor. If your doctor tells you, he was an MD, so he knew what he should and shouldn't take, and he may or may not have listened to them. So, okay, next slide. Okay, takeaways for today. If you want to change anything in your life, what's the first thing you want to change? Thinking. That's our third principle in unity. We create our life experiences through our way of thinking. Everything we create begins as a thought. Amen. Okay, next point. Stop complaining. Stop complaining. It's a pit. It's a hole. It's a hole. There's... No victim perpetrator. The energy level of the victim perpetrator psyche is so down into the red. Oh my goodness, you don't want to be a victim, folks. Think of something in your life you're grateful for and focus on that. And then focus on that feeling of what happens to you when you express that gratitude. Amen? The flower will unfold. Okay, next. You are a child of God. What are you waiting for? The universe is ours. And we can be as creative as we choose to be, or we can go back into our stinking thinking. Well, let's move on, amen? All right. God, we are so grateful for this lovely morning. Thank you so much for the truth that Jesus shared with us, that all the great teachers throughout time have shared with us, that God is love and peace and joy. And through divine mind, the Holy Spirit within, we have already eternal life. And God, we choose to live a life expressing joy and gratitude. Thank you so much. We pray this in the loving and powerful name of Christ Jesus. Amen. Amen.